Hi, Doug. Okay, we're live, Mr. Mayor. Oh, Mary. Thank, Thank you very coffee. much. I will call this meeting to order at 6.32 p.m. by formally recognizing that we are meeting on Aboriginal land that has been inhabited by Indigenous people from the beginning. We respectfully acknowledge our responsibility to work toward right relations with our Indigenous partners and thank all of the generations of people who have taken care of this place for thousands of years. In particular, we acknowledge the proud heritage of our neighbours from Alderville First Nation and the Mohawks of the Bay of Quinney. I will also advise that due to the provincial state of emergency and stay at home orders, this meeting is being held using electronic conference technology. Members of council, staff, and all delegations uh, will be coming in to this meeting through electronic means. The public is invited to join us by viewing this meeting live on the Municipality of Brighton YouTube channel. And with that, I will need a mover and a seconder that council approve the January 18th, 2021 council agenda as presented. And I'll ask you just to say your name because I don't think I see everybody on the screen. Mark. Ron. Moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Anderson. Is there any discussion? I'm going to try to figure out how I can get more people on my screen here. There we go. All right, I'll ask again, is there any discussion? Uh, Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? <coughs> Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. It's carried. I'll ask members of council if you have any declarations of pecuniary interest, and if so, please state the general nature thereof. Seeing none, are there any announcements this evening? Mayor? Council Bateman? If it's okay, I sent you a message on it to make sure this was okay. We had spoken about this earlier in the week, the, the initiative I have going with uh, former NHLer John Shabbat. If that's okay, if I can uh, speak to that. Uh, I think a lot of people already know. I know the community knows. There's two initiatives I have going on. One was uh, we were collecting gently used and new equipment uh, to be delivered to Mr. Shabbat, who played in the NHL for multiple seasons for Montreal, Pittsburgh, and so on. And the equipment we're uh, collecting is going to the Indigenous communities in Northern Ontario that he supports through speaking engagements and skill development and just, you know, working with the kids. It's going to Kittigan, Zibi, Rapid Lake and Lac Simone. With that initiative, I'm still collecting equipment for anybody in the community that wants to drop off is contact delivery. There's a trailer in my driveway. But what came from that in a discussion with Mr. Shabbat over the phone last week, we have uh, launched for this Friday for anybody in the community, it's more oriented towards the kids and then big kids alike, Mr. Shabbat is going to join. We're hosting a Zoom video interactive chat for the kids so they can talk to the former NHL or ask him, ask him questions, just pick his brain, just something fun for the kids. And it was all wrapped around everything for them, came to an abrupt stop, whether it was hockey, baseball, soccer, and so on when the pandemic hit. So this is just a way of us giving back. And Mr. Shabbat was all over this because this is really what he does now in his retirement is work with kids. So if anybody wants to join that, they can reach out by sending me an email. And Wednesday or Thursday, I will send the Zoom link to anybody that would like to participate with uh, this call. And the co-host or really the host of this after we open it up is going to be uh, York Bell Smith from Classic Rock is going to take the helm once we uh, get going on Friday. It's this coming Friday. I saw a, uh, an, an evite or invite on Facebook as well as a, a evite for an event. So 
it's, uh, it's uh, yes. up there as well. I had the hockey executive put it on the Facebook page and the Bright Minor Hockey web page. I just think it's a great thing for the kids, something to break up the monotony of everything that's been going on for them. Well, good work. Thank you. Any other announcements this evening? Thank you, Councillor Bateman, for that. And we'll move into the adoption of the minutes. We'll need a motion that Council adopt the December 21st, 2020 Council meeting minutes as presented. The mover. I can see everyone now, by the way, so you can throw your hands up. Mary Moots. Moved by Councillor Tadman, seconded by Deputy Mayor Vink. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor uh, Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. And it's carried. And I'll need a mover and a seconder that Council adopt the January 11th, 2021 planning meeting minutes as presented. Remover, Councillor Rowley, is there a seconder? Councillor Bateman, is there any discussion? Yes, Mayor. Go ahead, go ahead, Councillor Tadman. Thank you. Uh, just the one question about uh, since I uh, moved to have that resolution 2021 6 to do with the, the assumption of the road, I was wondering. Uh, has there been some movement forward to have that peer reviewed? Because as I stated before, it wasn't that I wanted to, you know, stop something from happening that probably would be legit legitimate to happen, but I just wanted to make sure that uh, we're moving forward with a peer review. Yeah, I'm pretty sure staff had some movement on that. Mr. Castleman, would you care to comment? Uh, the, the, the quick answer is uh, yes, we have. We've retained uh, an engin engineering firm to uh, provide that peer review. We're going to try and get it uh, completed as soon as possible and back in front of uh, committee and council uh, in the not too distant future. Go ahead. Just a follow up question. Uh, do we know at this time who the peer reviewer is for that? Yeah, my, my, my recollection is uh, Jewel Engineering. Thank you. Any further questions on the minutes? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. And Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. That's carried. We have no statutory public meeting this evening, which moves us into delegations. Council will hear two delegations this evening. And have, have they been um, granted access? Oh, I see them coming into the room now. So for the purposes of delegations, representatives are reminded that you have 10 minutes to provide your information to members of council and that language, content, and conduct must remain respectful at all times. Council will be provided with an opportunity to ask questions of clarification from the delegation representative based on the information that you have presented. Council is reminded that this is not an opportunity to engage in debate with the delegate nor advance a public policy position. So our first delegation is from the Trenton Military Family Resource Center regarding a nurse practitioner primary health care clinic serving military families and veterans in the Bay of Quinty region. And who's going to be the speaker? But Tamara, you're the executive director, so you're going to get to speak first anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll, uh, 
thank you very much for uh, for having us. We really appreciate uh, being here. Um, I have condensed our, our presentation somewhat um, to give you guys time for questions. But first, I'll introduce a group that uh, is with us. I'd like to introduce Lori Cooper. She is the Regional Executive Director for VON Canada and, and our partner in this endeavor. Um, and I can't think of a better partner to have. Uh, Brian Smith is with us. He is the honorary colonel, uh, an honorary colonel, and, and one of our very strong community liaisons. Um, he's got a long history working with uh, the Ministry of Health and Long Term Care, and many of you already know Brian um, from crossing his path and other endeavors. And we have Michaela Chapman with us, who is our communications coordinator at the Trenton MFRC. So um, thank you again for having us. Um, what we've come to talk to you about is, is a proposal that we are submitting um, in regards to um, uh, seeking a nurse practitioner clinic uh, for military families. And I believe um, I'll, share my, uh, I'll share my screen with you. Um, so let's see. Sure, let's see if this is going to work for me. Okay, so uh, where, there we go. I'll start by saying, first of all, um, uh, Canadian military families move often, which I'm sure you already are well aware of. We experience regular family separation and frequently have loved ones at risk. And this makes military families unique in, uh, in uh, their, uh, unique apart from their civilian counterparts. Um, there is no other occupation in Canada that, that uh, experiences these three conditions at the same, in the same intensity. And that's why military families need to be dealt with just a little bit differently. Uh, and they're at a, a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to accessing primary health care. Um, one, one of the things that I really needed to start off with here is that military families, the number one fact we want to make sure that everyone um, hears is that military families do not access medical care through the Department of National Defense or through the base or the wing. Um, they are accessing health care like every other uh, civilian in Ontario through the, the regular provincial system. And because of the number of moves and um, the other factors of the military lifestyle, this really does put them at a disadvantage when it comes to accessing uh, primary health care. 27% of military families in Ontario do not have access to primary health care. Uh, when you compare that to the civilian population, uh, the, the civilian population um, is at 15%. So you can see that families really are, um, military families really are at a disadvantage. So, um, so there are a number of factors that, uh, that research has showed us um, that military families are impacted due to this uh, disparity. Um, military families often lack routine follow-ups, including women's cancer checks, well baby checks and developmental screenings, which have impact. Um, a higher percentage of military spouses and children uh, visit primary health care providers to access mental health concerns. And then when we turn to the veteran population, um, medical exams are required uh, to, re to uh, receive benefits or to continue their benefits. And it, it really is a struggle to find providers that are able to do that which puts at risk uh, uh, medically released veterans benefits. That is an impact to the whole family. So we, uh, sorry, my apologies. Um, so our proposal, uh, VON Canada and the Trenton MFRC, we formed a partnership um, with a solution. And our solution is to develop a demonstration project or establish one uh, with a nurse practitioner clinic, uh, which would include a number of nurse practitioners, uh, an administrator and a system navigator, which is, is fairly important for families trying to navigate systems they very well may not understand. Um, once established, uh, we're hoping uh, that we learn enough through the establishment of this clinic that other clinics may be set up in Ontario, if, if at all possible. And the end goal is to provide all military families and veterans with consistent access to primary care. 
Um, and of course, you know, it would be wonderful. The, the ultimate dream is to see it all across Canada. Um, so the benefit to the community is that 32 pa approximately 3,200 patients without primary care um, from the local Quinney region um, system um, would be shifted into the nurse practitioner clinic. Um, right now, those family members and military families are seeking care through after hours clinics and emergency room uh, visits. Um, we do know that nurse practitioners are a very cost effective way and can lead to increased patient satisfaction. So it wouldn't be just primary health care, it would be really good quality primary health care. And uh, it certainly fits within the mandate of both the VON and the Trenton MFRC, as well as um, aligning with Ontario's Action Plan for Healthcare, the Ontario Health Team initiatives, and uh, Ontario Ministry of Health. So um, what we're asking for is um, we're asking for your support. Um, we're not asking for financial support. That's not what we're here for. We're asking for a letter of support to, um, to, uh, uh, to accompany our proposal. Uh, we would love it if you could start the conversation with your network, letting uh, people know that, that military families are struggling um, within the community for their health care. And, and help us engage in the, in the education campaign that we're currently engaged with. So I believe um, we can stop there and ask for your questions. Well, I will open the floor to members of council for questions of clarification. And uh, um, I will note that you're, most of you are on mute at the moment. Council LeBlanc, go ahead. I uh, certainly can see your point of uh, family members and our spouses. Uh, every time we moved, uh, I moved nine times with my mother-in-law the last 13 years yeah. and with my son, our son. And the same thing, my wife, my son, and my mother-in-law had to find new doctors every time. And it was very, very hard to keep on with your pres prescriptions and everything. And I, as a counselor, would support this and being one of the veterans that retired and I see the need because Brighton has a huge military family. They're still active and a huge retired military family still living in Brighton and here living in Brighton that could use this. And to let the, her know, we did an expansion to our doctor's facility for facilities for, for just per, not necessarily this, but to bring nurse practitioners and doctors to Brighton to assist all militaries. And I know that she's looking for right across Canada, not only here. So I hope I, I support this. Mm, thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you, Councillor LeBlanc. Any other questions of clarification or comments? Councillor Anderson? You're on mute, Ron. Okay. You know, I've read your presentation completely and uh, I was pretty excited about it. I, I, there's a few questions regarding uh, or a statement, first of all, is uh, the fact that 30, approximately 3,200 uh, patients could be uh, directed towards your um, your plan, your idea, and uh, assist when um, filling those positions that are those doctor requirements by many others. Uh, I think it's a great idea. Uh, first question would be, how, who would finance this? You say you're not asking for any support financially. Where, where would this be... Uh, how would this be financed and where would it be located? So the, the, the initial pan and, and Lori can jump into uh, is to, this is a proposal being submitted to the Ministry of, of Health and Long-Term Care. We're hoping that they will fully fund um, the proposal is, is our goal. Um, and we're hoping that it is located close to the wing. Um, close to the base. Although military families live over a, a very broad geographic area in our region, um, uh, we're hoping to centralize it there where the majority of families are, are living uh, somewhere in the Quinty West area. So okay. not necessarily on the base, but near the base. Yeah, it, 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 the actual location is yet to be determined. I have a wish list, um, but hmm. we, we really don't know yet. Uh, Lori, do you have anything to add? I can just a little bit. I mean, yeah, we would be um, pursuing funding through the Ministry of Health to be funded directly to provide the nurse practitioner clinic. 
That's a great partnership because VON, we have several nurse practitioner uh, clinics in, in Ontario, and so much so we have a, a director of practice for nurse practitioner um, care delivery, who has been very instrumental in the development of the proposal as well. So yeah, the, the funding we would be seeking would be through the Ministry of Health. Um, and uh, we have a bit of experience as a transfer payment agency for that type of service. And that's the that's Provincial good. Ministry of Health. That's right. Uh, thank you, Councillor Tadman. You're on mute, Mary. You're muted. Never yes. mute me. <laughs> neighbor Lori. Hi, neighbor Mary. Um, I think this is a wonderful idea and I certainly uh, would support this endeavor. Do you believe that, because um, Laura, you know, and I mean, Tamir, everyone knows that uh, we are lacking doctors here. And I know of patients who really do need a doctor because they haven't been able to get their checkup for their cancer uh, treatment, the remission, uh, their regular prescriptions, all that kind of thing. And they're desperate for a doctor and they're driving some to Toronto to a doctor they had years ago. Do you believe that this will help alleviate some of that concern if, if we have this particular clinic and we cut, <clears throat> make room for some of these people to maybe get into a doctor? I think if we, yeah, if, if we- wants to answer that. Yeah, I can take that, that's Here okay, Tamara, yeah. Yep. I think, yes, definitely. I think being able to support that number of patients through this nurse practitioner clinic will, you know, sort of decrease the demand of the people looking for primary care support in the community for sure. Uh, it will also, you know, be more preventative. I mean, we've seen, we know that there are healthcare needs, as, as Tamara has already mentioned, that go um, unmet or, you know, unaddressed when new families come to the community, whether that's children with special needs, uh, women not receiving their cancer follow-up or going for mammograms because they don't have primary care to help them service navigate to those services. So it'll have a direct impact in, in removing people from a wait list or from that um, a journey of you know trying to look for a new primary care uh, provider and also um, be preventative in its approach as well of reducing the, the stress on specialists as well. Thank you. Can I follow up, Mayor, please? You may. And so, uh, logically, then, um, if this does go forward, then we're relieving the emergency department. Absolutely the after hours clinic and that gives more room for people that can only go to the after hours clinic in, an, in you know, in a case where a child needs some kind of a, a checkup quickly in the evening. Yeah. So I think it's a win-win situation all the way around. I think it's a marvelous idea. And we said we should be looking after our military families. So I certainly support this. Thank you. Are there other questions or comments from members of council? Madam Clerk, I have a procedural question for you. I know we're not supposed to um, <clears throat> do any business, so to speak, uh, out of delegations, but I also know that there's no correspondence in this regard on the agenda. Would it be offside of us to um, receive the delegation and support the nurse practitioner clinic? It doesn't cause staff any additional work other than a letter. Um, I know the intent of that procedure was to not uh, pile on work for staff out of delegations um, based on a whim without without uh, due consideration. But I, I'm asking you if that procedurally, if we can do that, or what, what the procedure would be to ensure we do get a motion of support out there. <clears throat> I think your best bet is to refer it to staff, and then we can bring the letter back to Council under correspondence for the February 1st meeting, and then Council can endorse it. Okay, is that timely enough for the MFRC? Um, we will hopefully be submitting the, uh, the proposal shortly. We're hoping to submit it prior to the end of January. Um, I, I, Lori, I think saw it as well as I did. We just saw the, uh, the final 
rough draft. Uh, so we're just about ready to submit. So the, the sooner that we could uh, get uh, receive your letter of support, the better. Um, but knowing that we do understand your procedural um, um, uh, aspects of what you need to do. Mayor? There's ways around this. We can suspend the bylaw for this portion of the meeting. Right. I'm going to do that. I'm going okay. to ask for a motion to suspend the procedural bylaw for the purposes of receiving this delegation that's moved by Councillor Rowley and seconded by Councillor Tadman. Just give me a second to actually write it. The council suspend the procedural bylaw for the MFRC delegation. Is there any discussion from members of council? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. <clears throat> Councilor Ron Anderson. Yes. Councilor Mark Bateman. Yes. Councilor Doug LeBlanc. Yes. Councilor Emily Rowley. Yes. Councilor Mary Tadman. <clears throat> Mary, you're muted. And I'll try that. How's that? That's better. That's a yes, a definite yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink. Yes. And Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. Um, sorry, Mayor, could you please tell me who moved and seconded this suspension of the procedural bill? <laughs> With Councillors Rowley and Tadman. Okay, thank you. Welcome. <clears throat> and I will need a mover and a seconder that Council receive the delegation from the Trenton Military Family Resource Center. And further, that Council supports a nurse practitioner primary health care clinic serving military families and veterans in the Bay of Quinney region. So Council moved. Paul. Second. Yep. Councillor Tadman. Further discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. <clears throat> Councilor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councilor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councilor Doug LeBlanc? You're on mute, Doug. Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. It's carried. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, MSRC gang. We appreciate you coming and uh, providing us with this information. And you'll have a letter of support uh, prepared by staff and uh, in your, in your oh. inbox shortly, I hope. Thank, Thank you, you Council. Thank you. I was sure we could count on Brighton. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank Bye -bye. you very much. Our next delegation comes from Diana Thiessen. Diana, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly, regarding dark, a dark skies bylaw. And I've lost down my screen here. There you are. <laughs> so you are on mute, Diana. So, and I'll turn the floor over to you for your delegation. I, I like that quick business. Um, okay, well, I live on Harbor Street. I have had, I've been here 10 years now. I have had three different neighbors where I've had to have issues with the lights that shine into my home from the driveway at 129 Harbor Street. Now, this is the first time that the issue could not be resolved between the parties. So I'm a bit of an environmentalist and I love my birds and animals and stuff like that. So I thought, well, let me look into the bylaw. And I found there wasn't one. So then I, I um, after talking with Alan, I did dug deeper and I looked up well, what came up was the bylaw for Lake of Bays, which you have a copy of. 
along with a flyer that they did at the time that their bylaw went out, which explains it quite clearly. Um, so I thought in view of the park, the bird watching, and everything else here that a dark skies bylaw would be to the advantage would be advantageous for Brighton. And there are actually many parks, but the park wasn't interested, that are twin twined with these bylaws. Um, especially the ones, the Torrens Barrens, where they have the um, one of those, you can go and look at the sky things there. Um, so basically my personal reason is I don't want to fight with people over lights. Okay, I like it dark. I don't want my property lit up. I don't like motion sensors picking up motion on my driveway. What goes on in my driveway is my business. Um, these lights shine into my room. They shine around my house. So I basically, my bedroom faces the day. I don't really need to have curtains back there. So the environmental concerns though are lights, especially these blue lights that they now have, disrupt the sleep-wake cycles of all beings. That's animals, humans, fish, birds, and insects. Um, Laura can probably attest, since she's my neighbor, that there's a light shining out in the middle of the bay. Why is there a light shining out in the middle of the bay, right by the park? Um, it also disrupts the hunting cycle of predators. So they are out hunting at night when their prey is usually out doing things like catching ticks, if you're a possum. Um, so that means, you know, we've got coyotes and foxes out when they shouldn't be out. Um, the other one is fish and amphibians like turtles and frogs are really negatively affected by lighting with their hormonal cycles, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the birds, of course, we've got the migrating birds. Uh, it, it's kind of screws them up as well. Um, stargazing. I did not get to see any of those events this past December because I could not see the sky because of this light shining from my neighbor onto my property. So, you know, normally I like to stare at the sky. If I can't fall asleep, I just look out the window and just stare at the sky. And before I know it, I'm asleep. Um, keeping a property lit is actually more of an invitation to burglary than a deterrent. And that has been established. That's not something I'm coming up with. I Googled all this stuff and it came up from law enforcement that lighting a property says, hi, I'm here, especially if there's nobody home. And more often than not, there's nobody home. So she's lighting up the place, but she's not there. Um, so basically the designation means you'd be able to see the night sky. Um, there are two associations which have a lot of educational information. Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. And they have a light abatement program to assist with these kinds of things. And the International Dark Sky Association has more in, in educational information as well. There are over 60 municipalities with this bylaw already. And one of them is the Federation of Northern Ontario Municipalities which is 110 towns and cities just north of us. So I, I think it's time myself for Brighton to join the Environmental and Sustainable Group of Municipalities. This initiative will also be an added bonus to the tourism in the area, um, which I have a bed and breakfast. I like to have tourists in my house. So, Thank God my bed and breakfast isn't uh, on that side of the house. Otherwise, I'd be having complaints because they wouldn't be able to sleep. And that's it. Was I sure enough? You were. Thank you very much.
You're welcome very much. I will open the floor to uh, questions of clarification from members of council. And seeing none, thank you, Miss, very much, uh, Miss Thiessen. And I will uh, ask for a motion. The motion before me reads that council receive the delegation from Diana Thiessen regarding a request to create a dark skies bylaw. Is, 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 are you moving that, Councillor Bateman? Or are you asking a question? You're muted, Mark. <laughs> no, no, no question. Just a moving. Thank you. And seconded by Councillor Rowley. Any questions or comments from members of council? Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? Council Rowley? Councillor Ron Anderson? Members of council, sorry, you've been muted, so you'll have to unmute to uh, record your vote. Yes. Thank you. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Mayor. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. It's been received. Thank you. And thank you very much, Diana. We appreciate your time. Yeah. Am I free to leave now? You are. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, hey, I around the, uh, what's left of the meeting. <laughs> and um, I'll try to find out from Candace what's after this. Very well. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Take care. Thank you too. Our next uh, portion of our agenda is citizens' comment. Uh, I don't see anyone additional on the screen. Madam Clerk, is there anyone here that or coming in that would offer citizens' comments? No, I don't believe so. Thank you. Moving to staff reports. First staff report is from the Chief Administrative Officer regarding Strategic Plan 2021 Refresh, Mr. Castleman. We've read the report. Do you have anything to add or highlight here? Uh the, the, the highlights, uh, Mr. Mayor, is uh, we've uh, completed a strategic plan back in April of 2019. Uh, council is now about 20 months into their term and uh, 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 recommendations associated with the uh, uh, existing strategic plan calls for review on an annual or so basis. And uh, council has asked uh, me to put together a process for that very review. I'm calling it uh, a refresh exercise. We've uh, laid out for your consideration a number of different criteria for consideration. We've also provided you with an update on all the various strategic initiatives where we are and uh, suggesting that uh, we adopt the process and simply uh, establish a date when council and senior staff can get together, talk about priorities, talk about uh, progress, and talk about the environment that we're currently in. And we may want to rejig some of our priorities. So the purpose of the session is just that, uh, to have a working session with senior staff and, uh, and council members to review the strat plan. Thank you, Mr. Councilman. And the motion before me reads that council approve the strategic plan 2021 refresh exercise as depicted in schedule two, attached here two. Is there a mover? I will. Moved by Councillor LeBlanc and seconded by Councillor Rowley. Also the floor for questions from members of council. Councillor Bateman. Yeah, just for uh, the CAO, I just want to clarify that, that when we do the working session, we're, when we're approving this tonight, that doesn't, it still means we can talk about some of the things. And I think he answered the question, but I just want to make sure that we will be allowed to, you know, address something something might be changed, so added and that sort of stuff. It's a working document. That's absolutely correct. So the intent okay. will be to uh, to come back at a future meeting. Um, I will. My intention is to call a special meeting of council specific to this exercise uh, to provide staff with some strategic directions to carry out the rest of the term, essentially, Mark. Perfect, thank you. Councilor Rowley. Thank you, Mayor. 
uh, I guess my question, um, I know we had. That's not going to happen. That will probably. Councilor Rowley, you, you froze on us uh, just as you were getting started. So we missed your grand speech. I'm sorry. Is it working now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Start again. <clears throat> sorry. Sorry. Even in town, we have intermittent uh, internet <laughs> issues. Um, so my, uh, my question uh, relates to this year's budget. I know early on we had talked about maybe uh, having a hand in glove um, review with both the um, strategic plan and how that would affect our budget if it does. Uh, I'm guessing at this stage we will probably have the budget completed before we um, get to discuss uh, the street strategic plan. If that were the case and if there were items that we felt um, maybe needed to be pushed along during this year before next year's budget, how, how would we do that? Mr. Councilman, would you like to field that question? Well, uh, uh, certainly uh, my, my thought process from a timing perspective is that uh, we would likely have the refresh document and, and working session sometime in February, subject to everybody's availability. Uh, we have a budget meeting tomorrow night. Uh, whether that's the last meeting or whether we have three more, it's uh, it's difficult to uh, difficult to judge that. Having said that, you can rest assured that staff review the strategic plan on an mm -hmm. ongoing basis and use that as a guideline for establishing their annualized budget request. So we've not gone too far off what uh, the strategic initiatives that have been identified within the uh, STRAT plan. Is there an opportunity to rejig uh, uh, as we go forward? You bet. And uh, that's a decision of council and uh, uh, it's a matter of changing priorities if that's the wish of council and we can uh, put together an implementation plan in that regard. Councilor LeBlanc? Yes, uh, Mayor, uh, through the CAO. When you're looking at rejigging things like certain things, let's use the bridge as an example. You have it under public works. Now that we have a planner, should the bridging and the, that be under planning because of traffic and stuff? Just when we look at this whole document, get stuff in the proper departments. That's that's certainly something we can talk about during the refresh, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, just to circle back to Councillor Rowley's point, uh, if if we would, during the refresh, we come up with some uh, great and grand idea that it, um, will cost some significant monies, we could... Um, either ask uh, our staff to advise what monies we have available to us in terms of reserves or borrowing from reserves. Um, or if we can't do that, we can always reopen our budget at any time. Uh, it's not something we've done in Brighton before, but it's something we're certainly allowed to do. Thank, thank you for that. I once again froze up. I didn't hear the end of the CAO's comment, but I'm, I'm good with it. Okay. Any further questions or comments? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson. Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman. Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc. Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley. Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman. You're muted. Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink. Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. It's carried. Thank you. Our next report is 2020 Departmental Work Plans, fourth quarter report. Mr. Castleman, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight here? Just a few highlights. Uh, uh, we're on the theme of strategic planning. Um, uh, I provide a quarterly update to both council and to the community with respect to how we're doing, uh, uh, what initiatives that we've uh, accomplished, which ones have been delayed, etc. And certainly I've provided that for your consideration and the community's consideration also. A few of the highlights over the course of the last quarter include uh, the significant amount of time that's being spent on COVID and COVID restrictions and changing our uh, organization in order to meet those particular requirements. 
A second item is from a financial perspective, council had asked staff to uh, turn their mind to reviewing the uh, budget process and budget policy that we have in place. We've done that. We've done that, I think, successfully. We've uh, now have the uh, 2021 capital budget approved well ahead of uh, the end of the year. And we've adopted a new policy for uh, budget consideration. So uh, great movement forward, a great improvement in my view. Uh, so some of the highlights associated with what's been happening in the last quarter. Thank you, Mr. Castleman. And the motion before me reads that council receive the 2020 fourth quarter work plan report for information. Is there a mover? I see Mayor Vink, the seconder. Councillor Anderson, discussion? Councillor Bateman? Uh, oops. You're good. Uh, yes, just a quick question for the CAO. If we have any questions on because there's a lot in this document to, to absorb and read, and I, if we have any questions, can we email them to you, Bob, and you can, more just questions if there's clarification that we need instead of taking up time now to go through anything. Quick, quick answer is you bet. Okay. Thank you so much. Questions with regard to the motion? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. <clears throat> Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor <clears throat> Emily Raleigh? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? You're muted. Yes. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. And it's carried. Thank you. Our next staff report is with regard to sidewalk curb gutter repairs extension of contract. And I see that the report was prepared by Mr. Poole, who I don't see with us. So Mr. Parkinson, I'll ask if you have anything to add or highlight. Oh, your worship, not at this time. Thank you. The motion reads that council <clears throat> authorized staff to extend the contract PW 2020-03 sidewalk curb better repair to include both the 2020 and 2021 proposed work to Neptune Security Services Incorporated. The mover. Moved by Deputy Mayor Vink and seconded by Councillor Rowley. I'll open the floor for discussion. Members of Council, Councillor Bateman. Uh, more of a comment because I had that question and I emailed my question to the director, uh, Preston, earlier in the day and he got back to me and I thought that's what the answer would be, just so everybody understands what my question was. And Preston was aware of it. There's numerous spots and no fault of this contractor because I think they did a great job on the sidewalks this summer where people had uh, stomped their foot into you know, some of the sections before they were hardened and some areas were the pets. And my question revolved around would that repair fall under last year's contract? And the director, Preston, got back to me and said, yes, that doesn't come out of the new one. So thank you, Preston, for getting back to me today. Thank you, Councilor Bateman, Deputy Mayor. Uh, yes, I just wanted to ask, I know in past years we've had trouble with our contractors. This is the same contractor that we had this year, uh, correct? And uh, are we pleased overall with the job they did? Because of course we want to just keep going on these sidewalks because uh, we've gotten a little bit behind. Parkinson? Through you, Your Worship. Uh, yes, we're very satisfied with the work and uh, they would have fixed the deficiencies this year, but they just simply ran out of time to have the good weather to do so. So. Um, they're anxious to come in in April and, and hit the ground running and hopefully be done and gone long before summer gets here. Thank you. Any further comments or questions from members of the council? Uh, just a general comment. Uh, I think this contractor did a phenomenal job. Um, we've had some uh, we've had we've had some false starts in the past, as as you know, Mr. Parkinson. So this was uh, this was a, a really fresh. Uh, view of what can be done. And uh, I think these guys have, this group has set a mark uh, for future contractors. So I'm glad we're extending their contract. Councilor Bateman, you have a comment? Yeah, I was just going to say with, with the COVID restrictions, there's a new, large number of people that are now taken to the streets, or I should say the sidewalks walking. And 
you know, nobody laugh, especially you, Mary. I've taken up walking myself and I've been putting in 10K a day. So I appreciate the sidewalk repairs. But when I'm out, I see a lot of people out walking. So most of the compliments have been on the repairs and the, the way the sidewalks are starting to look. So. Good news story. Council Long? Yes, through Mayor for uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Parkinson. Uh, when I was on the walking last Friday, I, I uh, got, got brought up by two ladies that uh, mentioned the sidewalks that we're marking up, walking on on uh, Prince Edward Street, uh, no, Cedar Street, Harbor Street, and Gosport. And I thought there were sidewalks also. Basically, it's asphalt with a white line. And then when I found out today, it's not actually a sidewalk, it's a bike path. Uh, considered a bike path, not a sidewalk. That's why they're not being clean. Uh, so if there's no sidewalks in Gosport, it's a bike path. Is there any consideration in your program here, maybe not this year or next year, like Cedar Street, Harbor Street, to make these, the rest of these things, permanent sidewalks, where there used to be the bike path, sort of sort of pedestrians can walk without walking in the road? The, the, the question is not necessarily germane to the contract, but I'll allow uh, Mr. Parkinson to provide an answer if he has it. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so the only two bicycle paths or bicycle lanes that I'm aware of that are designated are Young Street, uh, George Street, and then County Road 64. So those do fall under the minimum maintenance standards, which are generally maintained by the, uh, the plows that plow those roads. So they remove the snow and they apply the salt application. And uh, as far as the chunk of Cedar Street and Harbor Street, uh, that is a paved shoulder, but it does uh, act as a sidewalk just by the pedestrians and the amount they use it. So uh, we reviewed our sidewalk uh, routes today and we're gonna ensure that those are, are caught a little better to make sure they're cleaner sooner. Uh, just to make them as safe as possible um, for the residents that use those sections. Thank you, Mr. Parkinson. Councillor Tadman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, maybe Councillor Bateman's not walking in my territory, which is probably a good thing, uh, and doesn't notice that I do walk most every day, and it's very busy on Baldwin Street. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for the marking there, whether you want to call it a sidewalk, a bicycle path or whatever, it would be very dangerous for people. And to have to, when it's not plowed, to have to walk out on the street, it's very busy there. Uh, more people now recognize that it's a nice walk down through Gosport and along the waterfront. So, uh, I uh, hopefully, uh, as you have promised, Parkinson, that that it will be cleared for people, and um, and I know many people enjoy that walk. So thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I, we're a little off topic here, but I was just going to comment on uh, making uh, some of those areas in the sidewalk. I think we've discussed that before, and I don't know if some areas if there's even enough room to actually make a sidewalk without having to go too deeply into um, taking away property um, from people or not taking away, using up property that's obviously ours, but just kind of, uh, I'm not sure there's room. I think that's why uh, they are, they have been done the way they have been done. Thank you. Are you looking for a comment on that or just making a comment yourself? Okay, hey, Councillor Blomp, you had your hand up. I just want to thank uh, Mr. Parkinson for his answer. Uh, because th those three pieces of sidewalk got me in a bit of trouble on Friday. So on an email I sent, but anyway, so I'm glad I got an answer so I can give it back to him. Thank you very much, Mayor. You're welcome. Anything further from members of council? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. <clears throat> Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? <coughs> Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? You're yeah, muted. Just saying yes, but we can't hear you, Mary. There you go. You're good. Yes. It says the opposite each time. Deputy mm -hmm. Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. 
Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. Carried. Thank you. Our next report is with regard to the EOS partnership recommendation, also prepared by Mr. Poole. So, Mr. Parkinson, do you have anything to add or highlight with regard to this report? Your Worship. Yeah, this is just a basic agreement. Um, they'll be mounting their equipment on our building uh, at their expense, and then uh, the benefit we get from it is a three year uh, free membership, I guess, to, to their uh, data and their data source. Uh, which will provide a high level of accuracy for our existing system and our additional new equipment that we're going to purchase later this year. Thank you. So the motion reads that council authorize the mayor and clerk to execute an agreement with EOS positioning systems for the installation of a GPS receiver and modem at the public works building at 67 Sharp Road. Is there a mover? I will. It's moved by Councillor LeBlanc and seconded by Councillor Rowley. Is there any discussion from members of council? Councilor Rowley. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, for Mr. Parkinson, is, is this something that would be compatible, obviously, with our stuff? And is this something that we would have been considering uh, anyway? And is it solely for the use for the municipality? Or is this something that other people tie into? I'm not, I'm not well versed in these things. Parkinson. Your worship. So um, the placement of base stations are for GIS purposes is equivalent to real estate. So it's all about location, location, location. So we have the location and it's at an elevation that's advantageous to the service provider. So it'll be multiple people that could access this data source and uh, we would just be getting free membership and others would have to pay for that. Membership. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, Deputy Mayor? Uh, thank you. You mentioned a free membership for three years. Is that what it was? And if so, what happens after that and how much? Parkinson? That's just the existing term of this agreement. So uh, it can be mutually extended beyond the end of that agreement. Um, but it's hard to say in three years, technology could change quite a bit. So uh, that's why we just kind of we're comfortable with the three year term. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. Carried. Thank you. Our next report is uh, with regard to the Brighton Retirement Living Agreements. Um, Mr. Walsh, we've read this report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? Uh, nothing further, uh, Mayor. Uh, the, um, the summary of the report is that we're looking at having two agreements. As you see in the report, one is with um, RSM building officials that are registered building code agency under the Building Code Act, and they are authorized by way of that um, registration to act as building uh, inspectors under the Act and can do so on behalf of other municipalities as called upon. Uh, it's desirous in the situation because it's a, a very big project, the Brighton Retirement uh, Living uh, Construction, and we're expecting that permit uh, imminently. And uh, so this added resources are necessary in, in two respects. One, uh, some of the specialized uh, HVC systems, et cetera, uh, associated with the building will be useful to have a, some specialized knowledge on. And secondly, just the size of the project, uh, given how busy staff are currently, that we'll need to just simply add those added resources so we can stay on schedule for the project and for this applicant. Um, there is one notable uh, aspect in the report. It mentions that the billing permit fee would be twenty-four thousand. It's actually to be one in front of that too, so it's one hundred twenty-four thousand uh, dollar billing permit fee. So, uh, for that clarification, could you repeat? You. That's appreciated. Could, could you repeat that, Mr. Both? The build, the building code, uh, the building um, fee is one hundred twenty-four thousand dollars, Councillor <laughs> Anderson. 
not twenty-four thousand dollars, as noted in the report. Thank you. That's our that's our estimate. We haven't received the building permit yet, but uh, just based on gross floor area, that will be in the ballpark of what it would be. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. Uh, the motion reads. That the mayor and clerk be authorized to enter into an agreement with RSM building consultants for the purpose of providing building code review and inspection services for the building permits associated with the Brighton Retirement Living. Two, that the mayor and clerk be authorized to enter into an agreement for cost sharing with Brighton Retirement Living Holdings Incorporated at the rate of 50% of incurred costs associated with the municipality's use of RSM building consultants and that the bylaw is prepared and presented for the appointment of contracted building officials as contemplated in this report be passed by council. Mr. Mover? I'll move that. Moved by Councillor Anderson and seconded by Councillor Rowley. Discussion members of council? Deputy Mayor? I just wanted to say that uh, I thought this was actually, it's a good idea because I'm sure that uh, building code on this sort of an establishment must be very detailed and uh, I'd like to see us get it right. So I'm in agreement with it. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, Council Rowley. I guess my question is, are, is this contract or this agreement solely for the purpose of this project? It has nothing to do with any other projects that are in Brighton at this time. It's, it's solely to help uh, our, our building uh, department for this particular project only. That's how I read it, Mr. Walsh. Uh, to the mayor, to council, that's absolutely correct. It's just for this one building permit project. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Councilor Tadman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just some little questions that I'm sure that Paul can answer. Uh, I was notified by a resident in that area that they, they didn't see any sign posted for this um, development. Uh, so I was just wondering, is there a sign there? I was driving by, but uh, I my eyes aren't that great as I'm driving to be looking in the field. So I don't know if it's there or not. Um, if you want to answer that first, that would be fine. Sure. Through the worship, there is, there is a sign up there the last time I went by and, and saw. They are, they are scarifying the site, getting it prepared to, uh, to start things off. And so maybe have removed the sign more recently, but there okay. was a sign. Uh, and just another follow-up, Mayor, um, and then you can get rid of me. Uh, this is a retirement home. Is this a three-tier or is this uh, just uh, people that uh, are retiring with no care? Yeah. The Mayor, it it's going to be a bit of a mix in my understanding. Uh, so there will be some nursing care on, on site, uh, but I think it's going to have a, have a a bit of an age in place flair to it. So there'll be other units that will receive less, uh, less service or less nursing service will be assisted living style quarters, but um, it will be a retirement home with uh, nursing care available to it. Just to follow up on that, Mayor, so not really a designated nursing home at any part of that. It's not a long-term care home. It's a retirement home. Because that is a big need here. I know people that are in hospital waiting to get in nursing homes. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's all for now. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Anderson, did I see your hand? Yeah, it's... Uh... Is this the, I'll use the expression, is this the last hurdle to, uh, it's needed to get get the project started? Or is there anything that the municipality is holding up or is there anything that can delay this any further? Uh, through the mayor, no, I don't, <clears throat> we're not seeing any, any delays. Um, we were first told that the billing permit would be submitted to us January 11th and then maybe the 15th. So that's how imminent we're expecting the submission. Uh, now speaking with the applicant uh, uh, late this afternoon, and uh, so they're still on track to getting it to us. Uh, they're just trying to get the requisite number of copies off, and uh, now to both two offices, our SM office and ourselves. So they're just making some of those last bit of arrangements. Um, but further to your question, the um, council might be able to expect a further report going forward with a... Um, 
what's referred to as a deferred um, installment agreement under the Development Charges Act. So being a retirement home slash nursing home, it's eligible for uh, phased development charges of six installments. And in speaking with Watson Associates who do our background reports and bylaws for development charges just uh, just uh, very recently, since the reporting, writing the report, uh, the, the, uh, the implication of the, of the background that he, he supplied was that we might, uh, might be wanting to look at a uh, deferred development charges uh, agreement and bylaw. So I may be needing to bring that forward to council as well. Uh, typically, not unusually, um, for larger projects like this that have some deferral status um, in the view of council and in the context of the act, it's not uncommon to uh, defer the development charges since the time of the beginning of the construction to the time of actual occupancy is fairly extended time frame. So this one will be about two and a half years before occupancy. So the winter of 2022 and um, the um, development charges of course are there to address costs incurred by the municipality and the services it provides. So, you know, the, they won't be demanding services until there's occupancy essentially. So it's not uncommon practice to defer development charges until the time of occupancy when there's a significant gap between initial construction and actual occupancy. So that's something I did. I did. Um, it was uh, something of not uncommon practice in Prince Edward County, and it's something that uh, we had discussed with the applicant during pre-consultations and, I'm in general, in concurrence with the idea of deferring development charges since municipality itself isn't really seeing any any uh, costs until the time or for the time of occupancy. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. I think it's great that you've got this together too. So, thanks. Thank you. Thank you both, Councillor Bateman. Uh, just uh, quickly for the CAO, I had sent three or four questions and just for clarification and Mr. Castleman got back to me and it made perfect sense. The only other question I'd have now is for the RSM consulting services, does this fall under the threshold of this having to go out to tender? We're allowed to award this without a tender process for the total cost of this? Castleman, Mr. Wolf. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in here. I'm not sure if our treasurer is uh, is uh, is on the line or not, or on the call or not. Um, I, I'm going to firstly admit that I'm not the uh, uh, guru with with respect to our uh, uh, procurement bylaw. Having said that, this is an eight thousand dollar item, uh, four thousand of which is being um, um, allocated to. Um, a, uh, a developer. So uh, our, our net cost is $4,000. I would suggest that at that threshold, we have the ability to uh, sole source. Ms. Widdefield, I see you're on the line. Can you, uh, are you able to chime in? Perhaps her internet isn't working up there. Uh, Councillor Bateman, does that satisfy your concern for now? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure it was following the process so that at some point someone didn't say, hey, this didn't go out to tender. If it showed up or shouldn't have, I'll leave it in the hands of. Fair enough. The, the, the total value is, is under $10,000, and I, I think we're able to source, source that. But Mr. Castleman, would you uh, be kind enough to get back to us on that, please? Sure. An email will do fine with that. Councillor LeBlanc. To you, Mayor, for the, uh, for the plant, the CA or the, or the planner, whichever one wants it, the $8,000, uh, it says it's for the first initial visits or how many visits does it take? You say this project's going to take two years. So how many visits over two years? So this 8000 is it escalating? Is it going to end up by 80000 over two years? Or Which I, I agree, if we have this expertise and with all the, um, the codes and the building codes to be done and to have it done right, I'm on board with the deputy mayor for that, and and we need this. And so uh, I just want to know if this eight thousand and how many visits? Because and do we pay the mileage? I think we pay the mileage, a hundred thirty, or we pay them a hundred thirty-five dollars an hour from Kitchener and return back and forth in their uh, in their lodging. So, uh, how many visits are expected over that two-year period? Uh, through your worship, 
it depends on how many reinspections that might be required in, in the process of of verification. So it's hard to say how many exact uh, total inspections there are. Um, you know, our own staff will be doing some inspections, uh, so uh, that will be um, that will be uh, that many fewer inspections that the code agency would be needing to do. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I really don't have an exact number because there may be an inspection and in, of uh, doorways and and the closing mechanisms and something's not working quite quite right and it's going to require another inspection. Um, what they've offered to do is coincide multiple stages of inspection in, in one visit, uh, one stay, and uh, minimizing travel and, and travel time uh, accordingly. Uh, but I don't, uh, there, there is a bit of an upper threshold that was offered. Uh, it's not in the agreement, as you see, um, but uh, there was a, a general indication of upper threshold and it and I don't remember the number offhand, but uh, in discussing with the CBO, it really wasn't that high. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I was just thinking about 130 uh, units, I guess that would be uh, at least 130 residents then. And I'm thinking of the, the pond that we're having peer reviewed now would is would that come into a problem here with them um, and I don't know about how how that's even managed as far as draining drainage goes so um, it, I know it's not necessarily something that we have to be concerned with tonight but we certainly have to be concerned if we have a problem so um, I guess we go ahead with this because we can always at some point if we have to stall, we're not going to be paying for, for a service that we're not utilizing. Is that correct? The mayor, that's, that's correct. I mean, the storm pond would have been designed looking at the full catchment basin and including uh, this Can site. Can you put, do something with her? Lock her in the laundry room or something. And uh, in the process of doing that calculation and design, they would have accounted for things like what degree of block coverage, and what degree of impervious area. Those are some of the variables that go into doing your calculation of the rate of runoff. And uh, so those are fairly constant and known factors. Um, and then when it comes to the actual billing permit stage, we will then do site level uh, analysis and we may be looking at stormwater retention, uh, for example, on the rooftops. Rooftop stormwater retention is uh, a common technique as well as parking lot retention. So they can capture maybe a two year event or something like that, or up, maybe up to a five year event. I'm not really sure. I don't normally design these things, but there's other, other mitigations that we incorporate at the time of the site plan uh, final approval. Okay. Um, so it's, uh, I'm confident to think that it's addressed and uh, we can um, also ask the uh, jewel engineer who's doing our peer review on that to, to measure, measure twice on that one. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think there, we're talking about two different ponds, though. Um, east uh, the, the one that we're uh, peer reviewing is the East Pond, and the one that this property would come into would be the West Pond. Um, all, all things we would have considered during uh, the severance and or site plan, I assume, uh, back, uh, well, going back quite, quite some time now. So, uh, Any further questions with regard to the um, authorization to sign two agreements uh, with regard to the retirement living building. Uh, Councillor Baker. Uh, just a quick comment and a follow-up question for Mr. Walsh, if I could. Uh, I'm 100% in favor of this. I think it's, this has been needed in Brighton for some time, but just want to clarify the comment on the phased development charges, because you said it, it's somewhat common practice for a retirement home slash nursing home. It's for either or, or does it have to be a combination of, because we already clarified that this was not a nursing home. I just want to make sure I'm understanding the, la the language. Uh, and, and if I may, I think the, uh, I think the Development Charges Act speaks to multi-residential buildings, period. But Mr. Walsh, over to you. Uh, through the mayor, yes, that's correct, uh, Mayor, you're, you're accurate there. 
Um, there's a number of things listed in the Development Charges Act that allows for deferral of development charges or makes it mandatory uh, deferral of, of development charges. <clears throat> um, one is retirement homes, uh, multi-unit housing, and affordable housing or nonprofit housing. All these things, uh, community facilities, I think, are another one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so there's a number of things that are mandatory deferrals under the DC Act. Uh, DC Act gives further flexibility to municipalities through uh, deferred development charges uh, agreements. Uh, and many municipalities will embrace strategies on things they want to encourage and support and move along. Uh, and so that might be something that council might want to consider thinking about during the strategic planning. Um, but um, there is an encouragement for these um, Developments that provide a social benefit to a community to receive the benefit of a deferral. Thank you both, Councilor Blum. Peter Mayor, for the uh, director of planning, I can uh, I can support and uh, and see why you would defer development charges. But my question is, um, with our uh, with RSM, Regional General Sergeant Major, they must be a specialized company being approved by the Act for doing build, building code. So it must be there's not too many companies out there. That does this. Is that one of the reasons you you were you went to them, Mr. Walsh? That's correct. There aren't too many uh, registered code agencies anymore. And when they um, overhauled the Building Code Act a number of years ago and increased prescriptive level of detail in the code, uh, the volume of the code now is is very extensive compared to you know, say, say fifteen years ago. And um, so training now is very challenging. So it's kind of reduced the supply of building code officials out there. And so the number of uh, registered code agencies, I think were originally envisioned to be quite a few, um, but that hasn't, uh, hasn't been the case for whatever reason. And this particular group uh, does all, and I won't say all, but does a great deal of the training of four chief building officials uh, um, so they are selected by the province to host and present this training. So they are, yes, and recognized by the province as well as being a standout code agency. Go ahead, Councilor Wong. Yes, one more question for you. So this is a, a first time for Brighton from what I see that we're going to do something like this with a developer. So one of the questions I asked when I first, I first got on council that we would treat everybody equally. So if another developer that came up with a large project that required this, he would qualify for the same type of service so that any other person that would come to the town, this would, uh, we would be able to offer this to them at the same thing, working in jointly for large projects of development. Yes, uh, through, the, through, through the mayor to council. Yes, I believe that this can be uh, an option for f future consideration. Uh, most places do have this incorporated into their fees and charges bylaw, and there's, you know I am doing some work on the fees and charges bylaw uh, to get to council. Sorry, Linda, I haven't got that to you sooner. <laughs> and and uh, um, but you'll you'll expect to see some provisions in that bylaw to uh, support this uh, a little more expeditiously going forward. Um, you know, we may, we won't need to be doing this or have, probably have an interest in doing something this uh, uh, administrative for all building permits. Uh, council may want to uh, look at what building permits really do require the added resources or added specialization of knowledge and background that would warrant going this approach for uh, your single attached homes and in your smaller scale multi-unit homes. Uh, our staff are more than capable of, of administering that. We get a large flurry of building permits, uh, then yeah, we'll have to add some additional resources from time to time for specific projects, uh, but only for a specific project. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Any further discussion from members of council? Council LeBlanc? Uh, through you, Chair. Are we looking on this one, you said there was possibly, are we looking at a cap over the two years uh, for this? Like, are you looking at putting a cap on it so that you would come back 50,000, 80,000 that would be shared 50-50? Mr. Wolf? Uh, to your worship, I've been given a, a degree of confidence and satisfaction with 
what that upper threshold might be or in the ballpark. Um, certainly nowhere in that territory that you described. Um, so uh, you know, we need to have, keep it a little bit open-ended just because, the, like I say, there may be a lot of re-inspections and degree to which we don't know um, until we get into that, uh, into that routine. But um, it's going to be difficult to putting an upper threshold on it at this time, I think. And, and uh, the opponent is aware of the agreement uh, and uh, has uh, is in agreement with, the, uh, if, with this approach as well. So don't expect there to be a problem with that. This is a $40 million project. And I think um, it's going to be, although a cost, real cost uh, um, sensitive project, um, when you have that kind of investment, it's, you know, made the commitment, it's, a, it's now a time sensitive project. So I think that would be where the priorities would shift. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. Uh, Councillor Mike, I'm muted. You're good. Um, this is great for our community. Um, one, uh, maybe just to review this again, it says the uh, municipality can. Uh, the services can be halted at any time uh, based on the need of the municipality. So if these, if this is getting out of hand or something, we can halt it and it can be reviewed and it can also be stopped and started again based on whatever's happening at the time. So there's some flexibility here and some protection. I know the costs will be probably higher than what we've ever seen in, in, in a development with a $42 million development comes to town. There's a lot of benefit to that uh, that off, that particular business. And so it's gonna be a cost to us, but the bottom line when this is done, the benefit as well as the uh, return is gonna be uh, well worth it. We cannot hold it up anymore. We need to move on with this. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. Any further comments or questions from members of council? Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? Councilor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councilor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councilor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councilor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councilor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. Carried. Thank you. There are no notices of motion or motions this evening. There's no unfinished business on the agenda, which takes us into bylaws. Our first bylaw is a temporary boring bylaw. I need a mover and a seconder. The council gives a bylaw for second and third reading and finally passes on the state. Seeing a bylaw to authorize a temporary borrowing from time to time to meet current expenditures during the fiscal year and December 31st, 2021. Is there a mover? Moved by Councilor LeBlanc and seconded by Councilor Rowley. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? Councilor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councilor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councilor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councilor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councilor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. It's carried. Thank you. And our second bylaw is the interim tax rate bylaw. And I'll need a mover and seconder that council gives a bylaw. It's first, second, and third reading and finally passes on the state. Seeing a bylaw to provide an interim tax levy for 2021 and to provide for the payment of taxes and to provide a penalty and interest. Is there a mover? by Deputy Mayor, Mayor Vink, seconded by Councilor LeBlanc. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councilor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councilor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councilor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councilor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councilor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. And it's carried. 
Thank you. And our third and final, well, third and final bylaw under the bylaws agenda is to appoint building officials. And it reads that council gives a bylaw its first, second, and third reading, and finally passes on this date, being a bylaw to appoint building officials under the Building Code Act, the incorporation of the municipality of Brighton. Is there a mover? A mover. Moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Anderson. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tedman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. And it's carried? Thank you. There are no reports of advisory committees of council, reports, minutes, and council reports. Which takes us to reports and minutes of statutory committees, boards, and external agencies. The only one being the Codrington Community Association minutes with a motion that reads that council received the Codrington Community Association 2020 meeting minutes. Mr. Hoover. Well. Moved by Councilor LeBlanc and seconded by Councilor Anderson. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councilor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councilor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councilor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councilor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councilor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. We we'll carried. Our next item on the agenda is correspondence, direction items, endorsements, communications, and petitions. And the piece of correspondence this evening is from the Trent Memorial Hospital Foundation regarding staff morale. And the motion reads that council received the correspondence from the TMH Foundation for information. But I would like it to say that we support the correspondence and we direct staff to design and manufacture a banner uh, that says we are in support of healthcare and frontline workers. I, I would move that motion. I would second that I'll motion. Second it. We have a seconder and a thirder. And and a thirder. Uh -huh. Is there room for discussion? Yeah, I, have, I would like to do that too. Just give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> So I have it moved by Councillor LeBlanc, seconded by Councillor Rowley, that Council supports the correspondence from the TMH Foundation and directs staff to design and manufacture a banner in support of healthcare and frontline workers. And I'll open the floor for discussion. Councillor Anderson. Uh, I just had a thought uh, at the uh, King Edward uh, Center, the, the electronic sign there, could that who we have some control over that sign? I believe we have and total control over that sign. I know that's why I ask. I think we should put maybe something we do right away is by putting something up there for a while, unless there's something that is uh, of urgent urgent before that. But uh, perhaps we could put something up on that sign right away. Mr. Miller, would you work with Mr. Hagerman on some wording for the sign outside of King Edward Park, please? Farewell. <laughs> you, don't, you. You, don't, you don't need a motion or direction for that, do you, Jim? No. We're no, good. So we're gonna we're gonna get her done there, Ron. How do you like that? Uh, I think it's a good spot. Councillor Rowley, you had a comment or question? Thank you. I'd like to tag on to that as well, and that maybe uh, if Mr. Hagerman is working on some kind of verbiage, maybe something could be up on our municipal website as well. I don't know how far or on our on our social media pages. Um, I like the. Uh, You've suggested a, a banner that we could hang up. I also would like, I don't know if, you know, council agrees that we do some lawn signs as well. Um, just, let's just paint the town with appreciation. May, may I suggest we, we start with the banner and, uh, you know, there's, there's lots of people who are working extremely hard uh, during the global pandemic. Um, we're going to have one, this one say healthcare and frontline workers and maybe um, maybe next month we'll want something that says something else and we can we can have that discussion at that point. I, I would agree with that as well that we just 
said, keep keep moving. It doesn't need to be just one, but you're right. Healthcare workers need to be top of mind. Anyone else for comment or questions? Madam Clerk, you Sure. Please. Can you hear me, Mayor? I can hear you, but I can't. Now I see you, Doug. Go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know if this is the time, but in supporting the healthcare workers, this is one. But we also have all our citizens that are going through a hard time and being closed up. And when we get to have a little bit of a life, maybe the town should organize this is somebody else's idea or Mr. Smith's idea, a coming out party for COVID, for the municipality, that when we can walk around freely and whenever it happens to have a, come, there's a lot of function, but we should have a coming out party for this COVID because it probably won't happen again in my lifetime. I hope that we're locked down when we got to wear a mask for the next, well, thank you. And for the healthcare workers, bring them to. Well, in, in my generation, a coming out party has has a different uh, connotation <laughs> altogether, Council of Rock. So uh, I do think, I do think uh, a party to, uh, or some sort of function celebration. to celebrate uh, whatever comes, whatever normal is when we get when we get through all this is a great idea. Uh, and I have um, I have asked our our the chair of our community events committee to kind of just start wrapping their, his head around that uh, for his committee. Um, but it's something we should probably discuss uh, tomorrow during budget because you know I, I know that uh, all the committees were asked to, to come in with a zero. But what we'll be asking for is a fairly significant celebration. But perhaps we can have that discussion a little bit more tomorrow during the budget. Is there any further comment or question with regard to supporting the correspondence? Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. It's carried. Thank you. Now we move into correspondence direction item. No, nope, we just did that one. Now we move into FYI correspondence. The Rogers 5G network expands to Brighton correspondence. And I have a motion that council received the correspondence from Rogers for information. Is there a mover? Oh, well. Moved by Councillor LeBlanc and seconded by Councillor Anderson. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. Carried. Thank you. And we move into question period. Madam Clerk, I don't see anyone on the line. Is there anyone in the waiting room coming in to ask a question for question period? Unnoted. There is no in camera session this evening. Our confirmatory bylaw motion reads that council gives a bylaw for second and third reading and finally passes on this date. Being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Corporation of the Municipality of Brighton Health on January 18th, 2021. No. Remover. Cool. Moved by Deputy Mayor Vink, seconded by Councillor Rowley. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. It's carried. Thank you. Rather than asking for a motion to adjourn, Madam Clerk, I will adjourn this meeting at 8.05 p.m. Normally, I would ask everyone to drive home safe, but since most of you are already there, be careful when you turn your seat around. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night.